Hey, what's up? Uh, this is David Marks, aka Dig That Data. I made this thing called the Video Killed the Radio Star Diffusion Notebook. So first things first, gonna make sure we have a GPU, good stuff. The notebook supports two backends. The default right now is to use the local Colab environment. When you open the notebook, it should be set that way by default. Um, alternatively, we can use the Dream Studio uh, backend API. We're going to connect to Google Drive. All right. And so because we are not using the Stability API at the moment, it will ask us to copy our Hugging Face token over. I can just click on this button to copy and paste that in from the Dream Studio homepage, just to show you what that would look like. Dream, click on your user icon, membership, API key, copy. And so if I wanted to enter that in, click on Use Stability API, hit play, and now I can just paste my token in there. So this cell where we set our project name, I'm going to call this demo for YouTube. I like to run the cell. I can also just keyboard shortcut, control enter. Project name is set. So the next step should create the folder, I guess. Um, so let's pick a video to download, YouTube short. Um, so yeah, don't think you're limited to YouTube. Feel free to just, if you have a video from somewhere, just put it in there and it'll probably work. So I'm going to hit play. All right. So now we have our transcription done. And down here we have a table now. So this table tells us what the transcription looked like, what the timestamps were for the different parts that came out, and gives us a field called override prompt. So this is actually editable. But first, let's move on. This theme prompt, uh, I provide a default in the notebook that is you know, something that I have played with and like. You don't have to use it. The way the theme prompt works, this is basically just a suffix. So let's pretend our theme was just by Ralph Stedman. What will happen is each of these prompts that we have here will have this appended to the end as a suffix. So when we use the override prompt, if we wanted to override this last frame, for example, we could say, you know, green trees and blue skies. This is a full override, by which I mean I did not add by Ralph Stedman on the end, and it's not going to do it on its own. So if you use override prompt, if you want to keep it in theme, you need to add it yourself. You can see here this last frame did not have um, the theme the theme attached to it. It's a very generic green trees and blue skies. So let's say I want to regenerate a couple of these images. Let's say we want to add to the end of this our by Ralph Stedman. We want to keep that one in theme. I'll set to keep. Keep is false. We don't want to keep that one. And so we'll regenerate. All three of those, but again, this is something that you can fill with using the override. Now you can see our override prompt is on theme. So what variations is, is for each of these init images, we have the option to generate images that are very, very similar, but differ like slightly. So we press play and almost nothing happens and we can compile our video. We can decide whether or not we want captions turned on. We're getting not safe for work triggers, so we'll use our override prompt again. Um, popcorn, popcorn, popcorn by Ralph Stedman. I'm gonna click out of the data frame to kind of trigger that I wanna keep it, and let's set that to not do that, and let's see if that works now. Clicking our way through, we don't need to worry about that since we're only doing one image. And now we are, are generating our animation. Let's say we want to give this a little bit more life. Main things you're gonna wanna play with are 
image consistency and the number of variations. I found that in general, uh, a variation of five and an image consistency between 0 0.7, 0 0.9 uh, is usually a good range to play with. Uh oh, something happened. All right, well, I'll just hit play again. So it detects the images that have already been generated. In general, if you hit an error, just hit play again. And like I mentioned, it's a the notebook has a pretty smart resume, and it should be able to just pick up where it left off. Let's talk about optimal ordering. So I've got that disabled for the moment. I would suggest in general, you probably want optimal ordering. The way optimal ordering works is it's going to shuffle the images to try and reduce the frame to frame jitter. So right now we do not have optimal ordering selected. So this is going to be our more jittery version. Might be a little bit subtle in that. The... All right. So this is without optimal ordering. And so things just kind of bounce around randomly. And so this is with optimal ordering on. And you can see that it kind of looks more almost like it's an image to image thing where the, the bubbles are kind of growing and shrinking. You get the idea. Thanks for thanks for coming along and watching as I played with the notebook.